Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today, I've got one for your inner child, or for your child, if they happen to like watching the show. You'd be surprised how many young people watch the show. So, hey, kids, thanks for watching today. This is for you. <laughs> This was a limited edition run of guitars done in the early 2000s for the Japanese market. And what brand are we talking about today? We're talking about Fender today. But who did these guys partner up with this time that children might like? Well, none other than Mickey Mouse himself. That's right, this is an official Fender Disney collaboration, and these things are actually pretty fascinating. Let's go ahead and get this thing out and see it. Inside here is the Mickey Mouse Telecaster. <laughs> so in the mid 2000s, Fender and Disney partnered up and created three different Telecasters. You've got this guy, the Mickey Mouse Tele, you've got the Minnie Mouse Telecaster, and you've got arguably the coolest one in the entire series, the Donald Duck Tele. And each of the guitars got a unique design on them. So Mickey Mouse's, I would say it's probably the least attractive to most people, but if you've ever played like Kingdom Hearts, I could see how this would be a very attractive beast. But they're stylized after their old logos. So the Mickey Mouse, he has his red overalls, he's got his yellow shoes, his face was initially black and white, so they have the white headstock on here. Whereas Minnie is a red body with white polka dots on it to match her dress and a yellow headstock that time because of her yellow hat. Now, Donald, it, it's got a duck butt on it. Who doesn't want the duck butt telly? <laughs> that one has some extra quack to it because it's got his yellow beak as the headstock and it's got his whole sailor uniform. That's definitely the one that has the most artwork done to it. So they're kind of quirky novelty guitars. It's been rumored that around 200 of each of them exist. There's actually a Stratocaster version of the Mickey Mouse one as well. You can check them out side by side here. I almost think the Stratocaster body pulls off the design just a little bit better. But first impressions here, it's actually nicer looking in person than I was expecting. The red and yellow, it's very striking. And I find it funny that the plastic covering is still over the neck pickup, but yet this thing was clearly used. I mean, it's got lots of scratches and dings on the back. I was kind of hoping it would be a little bit cleaner because I really do want a complete set because they're just so interesting and mainly because my kids when they were younger they loved these characters so I just thought it'd be nice to have a set of these for them but this is not the only time that Fender has ever paired up with Disney there's a Fender Custom Shop Wish Upon a Star Stratocaster. That thing is crazy. It's got a purple neck, it's got stars, all that cool stuff, but that was a high-end custom shop creation. And Fender partners with a lot of different people. Like, check out the Spider-Man Mustang video. Those things are ridiculously cool. And I'm not even the biggest Spider-Man fan. These guitars are kind of interesting because there's a few different fan bases for these. There's your Disney guys and your Fender guys. What are the odds that you find a Fender guy who also loves Disney? Disney, pretty good. A lot better than like a Les Paul that has Donzi on it, where you have to find a Donzi lover and a high-end Les Paul lover. These things have remained steady on the market for a while. I've been looking for a Donald Duck telly for about four years now, and I just can't find one. Like you can find old listings where you could have picked them up for 900. Nowadays, you're generally between like 12 to 18, maybe a little bit more. Just depends how desperate you are, because if you see one, you kind of have to jump on it because they were Japan exclusives. They don't show up in the US too often. So besides the guitar, they all came in gig bags that were a little bit special. So there's Mickey Mouse, Donald, and Minnie and they all have that on the outside. You know, very similar to the same design that we're seeing right here. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the other case candy, so I can't really report on what these may or may not have had. So to learn more about this Japan exclusive Disney Fender mashup, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take a look at its individual parts and specs. Let's take a peek inside Mickey Mouse. This thing was dirty the frets were super rusted so it took a little bit of tlc to get this to where it is now unfortunately i'm not sure if this is clean enough for my personal collection i might have to catch and release this and wait for a cleaner one but let's go ahead and document this one while it's here anyways so beautiful nice red pick guard here it's got scratches all over it it's definitely been used and i just find it really strange that nobody had ever taken that cover off of the pickup I mean, if it was a mint condition collectible, I probably would have left it on too, but it's not. So we might as well get your full output on the pickup. But underneath here, nothing too fancy. I kind of like the uh, white outline I have going on there because I cleaned this with the pickguard on. Kind of reminds me of the Mickey Mouse stuff. 
but you will see this is just a generic body so if you had a truss rod right here you could adjust it but this one has it at the top of the headstock and as far as the neck pickup goes just a pretty generic telly made in japan style pickup with all your regular routing under here so no crazy modifications for you As far as the bridge goes, regular single coil. You've got three barrel saddles right here, and this is a string through telly, and it secures to the guitar using those four screws right there. You do not have a top load option. But here's what the backside of the original pickup looks like. There's your cavity route, and then you got all this, the string through area, the securing area, and then that wire right there is your grounding. Within the circuit, the bridge pickup reads 5.15k ohms, 5.82 in the neck, then the middle just for fun, 2.77. So these should be fairly vintage sounding, would be my guess. Your three-way switch has one of the Pilgrim topper hats on it. Nothing too crazy there. And then I guess you could also say these are like the buttons on Mickey's pants, if you don't want to say shoes. That would have been kind of cool if they did two yellow strap buttons on the end acting as shoes. So buttons or shoes, you don't see these yellow knobs on too many guitars. So now as far as the condition goes, I scratch removed and polished it. So, I mean, it looks pretty good now, but there's a lot of edge wear dings, which unfortunately due to the nature of these, you're either going to find ones that kids were handling and probably learning to play guitar on and then like diehard Disney collector fans. So this one's got a couple of dings right here. If you look at the top, you've got some scuffs or something right there. So it does present well, but the back is just a little bit more chewed up than I was looking for. But that's the thing, buying these things kind of sight unseen from Japan. Like I had my buddy in Japan help me import this one back to the US because it was on like a Yahoo Auctions Mercari type thing where it wasn't a shop selling it. It was just a random guy. So sometimes I say, okay, here, just, just take my money and I, we'll, we'll hope it is what it is. Buying vintage guitars overseas is a nightmare process. That's why I like sticking to the brand new stuff, but these things are cool enough. Nowhere near vintage, but I'm just talking in general. Sometimes Japan has cool vintage stuff too, and I'm just too scared to do it because there are no returns on this stuff. But if you get it in the light just right, you can actually see like multiple seam lines in the body. Like there's one right here, another one right there. Then you can tell there's just a whole bunch of like wood grain lines underneath here. I'm not really quite 100% sure what these things are made out of. I couldn't find an online spec sheet. I would guess just like a standard bass wood or something. But moving on from our body, we can get to our neck. Now this looks like a straight up maple neck with a rosewood fretboard to me. We've got 21 frets on this one. Not quite sure the exact style they might have been called, but they've got some good height to them. But we've got just our regular white dot inlays, and this thing was actually played. You can see some flattening wear in your typical cowboy cord area. Maybe a little bit of fingernail wear here, but that all pretty well cleaned up when I polished the frets and conditioned the fretboard. A level recrown would take care of all that wear, but I don't even think you're quite even at that point yet. The neck looks like a nine and a half inch radius to me, because seven and a quarter is just not quite enough. And it's your regular 25 and a half inch scale length for a telly. Could be wrong, but the nut looks like it's made of bone. It measures 1.66 inches and increases to 2.06 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.85, and by the 12th, 0.92, so it stays pretty skinny. Here's the neck at the first fret and the 12th fret. Just gets nice and wide, but stays a C shape. I've come to really appreciate this stark white headstock. It's cool on just so many different levels. I guess you could say it's kind of like his gloves too. Up here there is some sort of an impression on the headstock. That's a bit of a bummer. Probably caused by some strings that were left long. And then I'm not sure if that's considered a defect or if it left the factory like that, but some of the white paint didn't quite get inside of there, which is where you adjust the truss rod. But it reads Fender Telecaster in your normal font here with a single string tree. Now let's talk about the backside. This has a couple of nasty dings right there. It just goes like straight through the finish into the wood. Kind of hard to see because it's all been polished up so much. So we've got those areas of wear. There's a small chip right here in the finish. That wouldn't be too hard to touch up. If I had my black lacquer pen, I'd probably just do it myself. But you've got a couple of dings around here. So I mean, it's not trash, but I kind of want like a, a closer to mint example for my collection. But, you know, maybe I need a set of players grade ones and a set of like collectible ones. But there you can see your string through ferrules. Take a quick look along the edges here. They're not in too bad a shape. You got a couple of dings. 
Thankfully, it doesn't look like any neck pocket cracks, which is always great when the ship's from Japan in a gig bag, right? But there's like uh, some scuffs and scratches right there, some dings. It's been used. But if our serial number's not here, and it's not here, where is it? These older made in Japans, they actually put them right here. So I could be wrong, but I mean, I would assume maybe that means 2008. That seems to fall within the information that I found online. But that's just a decal underneath the finish. That's what's nice about this. This is a full on gloss finish. So nice and glossy here, just like the rest of the body. But it's a rosewood fretboard tally, so you don't have any finish over top of that. But up here, you have Goto branded tuners, which are made in Japan. So I guess it kind of makes sense they would put them on this guitar. And Mickey Mouse with the copyright of Disney. All said and done. I don't know. Now it's starting to look pretty good now that it's all strung up, polished, and looking good. But it's very lightweight. 7 pounds, 1.9 ounces. So let's go ahead and hear how Mickey sounds. So what do I think of the tones out of this thing? 
happily surprised. So the neck pickup, I think, steals the show, which is strange for a Telecaster. I'm running it through my Marshall Blues Breaker right now with my Red Rocks pedal, and it doesn't really want to distort. <laughs> It just gets really fat sounding. But the bridge wants to get angry. Naturally, the middle wants to get angry too. But then that neck. kind of cool. I like it. It takes some getting used to, but then back on cleans, it's just so great. You can really run that neck pickup full on blast. But I find the bridge is almost a little bit too hot for this amp. So I really like to roll that down to about five and then it kind of matches the neck pickup. I'll show you. Neck on 10. And roll that down to five. Now that we know all about the Mickey Telecaster here, what are my final thoughts on this thing? All right, I can't sell it, guys. After I played this thing, wow. I, I know it's not meant to be like an ultra high-end guitar, and these Fender Japan made guitars are usually pretty good, but this one, that neck pickup seriously impressed me. Normally, neck pickups on tellies, that's not the thing that you love. You'll love the bridge pickup, but this one, I don't know, maybe it's just because, you know, I was learning actual songs that I really liked that happened to tie in with the whole Mickey and or mouse theme, but I had a great time with this. So no, I, I'm not gonna sell this one. I think I'll just touch up that back part right there and then continue on with the rest of my collection here because I definitely want to document all three of these and then just have them for myself because, you know, they're kind of cool, even if you're not the biggest Disney fan out there. However, as I was playing this, the more and more I wish they just kind of would have did the entire neck in white. Because you gotta remember, your side profile view shot looks like this. You have the black, you've got the really stark red. I've, I'm really digging this pick guard now that I've had it in person. And then you just have this like maple color. It's like, ah oh man, I kind of wish they would have did like a trans white or something. Because I love wood grain a lot. So to say to cover it over means a lot if I'm saying it but I like Mickey's signature back here. It plays great and sounds great. What else do you want from me? It's a cool guitar, and I hope you troglodytes enjoyed checking it out with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.